Hey, I'm back in the hack shack, but I'm not working on electronics. This time it's jewelry. Welcome to Hack a Week. So, as a lot of you know, Lisa and I are getting married in April. That's coming up pretty quick. And I'm working on our wedding rings. I made her the engagement ring. I did a pictorial video of that a while back. And I thought it'd be fun to share the making of the wedding rings with all of you viewers. And I've got some silver here. I've got some gold that we're going to melt down. And I've got a ring that was her grandmother's ring that's going to get incorporated into my ring. Some of the gold I'm going to melt down for her ring is from her relatives and her mom. And when they're all done, the rings will be made out of sterling silver and gold. So, first of all, I've got a little bending and forming to do here. And I want to share with you some stuff I've learned about silver along the way. Now, I'm a novice jewelry maker by far. I'm barely getting started. It barely scratches the surface of this wonderful hobby that I really love. I love metalworking. And working with it on this small scale is actually really rewarding. It takes a lot of patience and uh, some skill sets that you need to develop from a little bit of studying. But thanks to the internet, once again, if uh, you get digging around, you can find information on just about anything you need out there. I've learned quite a bit in the last few days of what to do and what not to do and solved a few problems I was having. One of the first things you need to learn about this whole thing of making jewelry is that when you work with metal, you will work hard in it. Now the silver I've got here comes in sheets and uh, it's probably a little less than a sixteenth, probably about a millimeter thick, maybe a little more than that. Let's uh, check it out here. It's about, well, it measures exactly a millimeter, so maybe just a little more. But it's fairly soft when you get it. It'll bend pretty easy. but silver and other metals as you keep working them and you bang on them with a hammer and you bend them more and more they start to stiffen up and get more and more difficult to work with now this piece right here that i bent a minute ago with ease takes quite a bit now to bend it and the more i work it the harder it's getting reason for that is i'm squishing together the crystalline structure of the metal so it's called work hardening. Now if I was to hammer on this a bunch, it would do the same thing. And as you work with silver, or any other metal for that matter, and work it, it's going to get harder. So if you need to do some bending on it later, and you need to work the metal some more, you need to soften it back up. The technique of doing that is called annealing. And what you do when you are annealing is you're taking it up to a certain temperature. There's an ideal temperature for each metal to get it up to. And you, with silver, you get it up to where it just barely glows, kind of an orange-red color, and then you quench it in water. And what's happening is you're warming up the crystalline matrix of the metal, and the crystal structure is actually expanding apart a bit. And the structures are getting a little bit longer and pulled apart. And when you quench it, you freeze it in that state. If you let it air cool, they slowly want to come back together. And there's a way to harden metals by doing that with heat treating. You heat it up and then you cool it down over a long period of time very slowly and it will harden because you'll bind them all together. Another way to harden it is what I just showed you by work hardening it. When you're all done with a piece of jewelry, a technique to harden it up and make it uh, more robust to be handled and not possibly bent if it's a delicate piece of jewelry, is to tumble it in a rock tumbler with a little bit of soapy water and some stainless steel shot. And you put that in there and just let it tumble overnight. And the action of the stainless steel banging against it lightly will do two things. It will polish it and it will also harden it for you. So what I'm going to show you first is the annealment process. We're going to take this piece here that is getting stiffer the more I bend it. And we're going to warm it up and we're going to quench it in water. I've got a fire resistant uh, piece of material here to work on. You can get this from jewelry supply shops. The one I use is uh, Rio Grande 
They're in Albuquerque. They're online, RioGrande.com. All kinds of jewelry making supplies there. So this is uh, fire resistant and it's also very lightweight. It won't duct the heat away from the work. And uh, a little trick I did here, I took it and took a file to it and put these grooves in it so that when you're working with a piece of metal on it and heating it up, there's a minimal amount of contact area with the metal um, ducting any kind of heat away. So we're gonna warm this up on here then we're gonna quench it over here in this little plastic container that is actually a repurposed uh, DVD, blank DVD cover, you know, the ones that you screw on there? Yep, there you go, hack a week, repurposing stuff. So we wanna heat this up to a, uh, a kind of an orangey color, not bright cherry red, that's too hot, not quite glowing is not hot enough, it's a, it's a critical temperature to get it at. Now we're getting there, you can see it's starting to get that that nice orange glow to it. Okay, we're gonna get the room lights back on and zoom back out so you can see the quenching process. Okay, we've had this warmed up for a little while here now. Let's kill the heat. Pick it up with a pair of needle nose pliers, not with your fingers. <laughs> right into the water. You can hear it go sizzle. That's it. It's quenched and now it should be soft again. And indeed it is. It's very soft. Here I have a crock pot. A little crock pot set on high. And in it is my pickle. Woo! Steamy. And what this is is just clear white vinegar, distilled white vinegar, with about uh, a tablespoon of sea salt, not iodized salt, just regular sea salt. And you can drop the piece in there and it will take care of all that oxidation. It'll clean it all up for you because of the acetic acid and salt. I've got a couple other pieces here that are actually part of the ring that I also need to clean up. I've already annealed them. So we'll drop those in there. Those are two folded over pieces that are going to get used. Oop, fogged up my lens there. <laughs> so let's go out to the uh, other shop and I'll show you how I folded those pieces over as you peek at the pickle through the fog. I've got the drill press uh, vise out here set up on the bench. And the reason I'm using this is it's got a really, really sharp edge on the jaws. Uh, and it's the first bend that I'm gonna make I'm going to do at five uh, millimeters so I'm going to just clamp that in there really really loose and I'm going to set my calipers to five millimeters. Let's see. And I'm using the depth gauge on this end to actually set this exactly five millimeters deep. Okay let's tighten that up good and tight. Give it a final check. All right, that looks good. Now, I need to bend this over, but I don't want to just go hammer on it because all that's going to do is just really distort the metal a lot. So what I'll do is take a piece of this flat stock, put it up against there, and then I can hit on this and then that will push it over all at once. I'm essentially duplicating what a, a metal brake would do. Okay, we're ready to start bending. So I'll put this up here and just give it a whack. You can see it starts to bend over right away. Try to keep the bend as even as possible. Now once it gets to this point, I'll use the flat of this flat stock hammer on it like that. Get a good sharp bend there. Now I'm going to loosen this up. And what I'm going to do is lift it up just a little bit and raise it up about maybe two millimeters above the surface. And now I'll take this straight edge, put it on an angle against this edge right here, what I'm after is to bend it down a little bit. 
I need to start folding it over. So we'll get it lined up carefully and give it one good whack. There's the initial bend I want. We'll do one more. Now I'm going to put it up against it like this and hit it. And that'll help straighten this back edge back up vertical again because it bent over a little. I don't want that to bend. I want it to bend right at that spot where it was on the edge of the jaw. Now we'll take this out. We'll raise it up just a little more and repeat that whole procedure one more time. So now you can see I've got a, a pretty good bend started there, but it's not all the way flat. Now what I'll do is put it back into the jaws, get it centered up in there nice and even, and then just use the jaw crushing power to flatten it the rest of the way. And because this pivots in the middle and it can move a little bit, I'm just going to give this a couple taps like that to make sure it's really crushing it evenly. And I'm going to really tighten that down. And now we'll move it down in there just a little deeper and do that again. Hit it a couple more times. And we'll take it out and we should have a nice even bend, nice and flat. Now I'll just do that again with the other piece I've got and we'll move on. <clears throat> We're going to work on my ring first. My ring is about a 10. This is one that I just made up to size up my ring finger and it just fits on there just right. This is a ring arbor. It's got the sizes marked here and that one slides right on to a 10. Maybe just a little bit past a 10. And it's always a good idea to err toward the small side because you can expand a ring just by stretching it a bit rather than having to cut it and re-solder it to make it smaller. So I'm going to go for a size 10. Now here's a ring uh, chart and let's see we've got size 10 right here. There's Lisa she's a six and a half. Size 10 is here. That right there is the inside diameter in millimeters 19.84 and then the inside circumference is 61.6 millimeters. So that means I pretty much want to cut the length of those two pieces I just bent to about 62 millimeters and then bend them around in the arbor, fit them together, and then that, that little bit extra just gives me a little room to file. I may even cut them at 63 millimeters just to be on the safe side. Let's take a look inside here at the pickle, how our parts are doing. Look at that. Nice and shiny clean again. And once we take them out of the pickle, we'll give them a little rinse here in some water just to get all the acid off. As mentioned before, I'm going to mark this to a length of 63 millimeters. 61.6 is the inside circumference of a size 10, but I'm going to leave myself a little bit of room. 61, 2, and 3. So I'll just mark that right there. Now we'll cut this with a jeweler's saw. This is a really, really fine blade. Makes a ping when you... And it pulls to cut. It's not on the pushing stroke, it's on the pull stroke. It takes a little getting used to using one of these. But once you get the hang of it, it's not too bad. This particular uh, frame. This is called a saw frame. It likes to be tilted about like that to cut straight for some reason. I've got the ring arbor clamped up in the vise and we'll just take this and start bending right here on uh, the size 10 mark. We're just going to bend this right on around the arbor by hand. And it's fairly soft. It's two layers, so it's a little difficult to bend, but it's not too bad. Try to keep it as parallel as I go, as I can. Now 
Well, there's the basic start. We'll just keep working this until we get a nice circle that meets up on either side. It's going to take a little while. Well, I've got it bent to a pretty rough shape, and I've got to put it back on the ring arbor now and start hammering on it a little bit. We're going to do like a hammered finish on these, we decided. So I'm going to just start tapping on this and working my way back up to the where it should be at 10. Now it's kind of looking like this might be too small, which is odd. Um, I'm learning a lesson here. Cut it a lot bigger than you think you need. It looks like I need that much room in there for there to be a 10. Um, the way it sits right now, let's see, does it go on my finger? Not quite. So I'm going to have to put that back in there, I guess. Well, I've pieced that section in there and that works out to a size 10 slides on my finger okay okay we're ready to solder this one up first thing I'm gonna do is get a little bit of flux on there which is just a uh, kind of a yellowy liquid this helps keep the fire scale from building up put some on both sides a nice generous amount and we're gonna sit that back here <clears throat> now uh, there are picks that you can use like this where you just melt a little bit of solder pick up a ball of it and drop it on there that's one way to do it I suppose and since I come kind of from the whole electronics thing I like to use this type of solder and just touch it on there after I get the heat to where it needs to be and that is exactly what we're going to do now so we're going to warm this up You'll see the flux kind of change color. And as it gets hot enough, it'll get a certain look to it. After a while, you just get a feel for it. The flux will go dark, kind of a brown, and then it will get lighter. And as it gets lighter, the surface of the metal will start to look a little bit shinier. And of course, if you shade it from the light a little bit, then you can start to see the a little bit of a glow in the metal and you know it's hot enough but after a while you just get a feel for it um, you can tell just by the way that the color change happens you see how it goes back to dark pretty quick it's still got a little ways to go till it's hot enough and you can tell right away when you touch the solder on there if it doesn't melt just like electronics uh, soldering Whatever it is you're soldering should be hot enough to melt the solder. And there it goes. You can see it just wick into the crack. And just kind of keep the heat on and off and on and off. And this, this believe me, this ducks the heat pretty quickly. This is getting really warm in my hand right now, so. This technique is a little goofy, I know, but it does the job. So there it is all soldered up and quenched, and it's a, where am I, size 10. Just barely fits on my finger. It needs a little bit of uh, smoothing out on the inside here, but that's it. And we'll just cut off this little part right here, and we have both parts here. And then we'll throw that into the pickle to clean it all back up and we'll keep going with this now we get to file get rid of all the extra solder and actually make this portion of the ring thin enough small enough that grandma's ring will slide right over it I've got both the ring halves clamped up here in the vise. Uh, I've been filing on this section, making it a little thinner so that the ring might fit over it. I actually got after Grandma's ring with uh, a Dremel tool with a sander drum on the end, and I've been sanding it a little bit bigger on the inside rather than expand it. I haven't really taken that much off, and it's getting pretty close to being able to fit. But this width right here, this is about 
six millimeters and as you recall grandma's ring is about four millimeters wide so that would leave about a millimeter on either side which wouldn't be too bad but I want to get that down just a little bit narrower so I need to file a little bit off from each side and uh, just keep going with the dimensions here till we can get grandma's ring to fit on there got some 80 grit emery cloth here I'm going to see if I can just take away some of the material on that like that and just keep rotating it after a lot of filing look at that perfect fit slides right on there so now I just need to get the other side and slide that one together and then we can get in behind here and solder this thing up and then we start polishing both parts are together the seam is uh, sealing up pretty good there no gaps but uh, there's still just a little bit of a gap on either side of the ring so I think I'll just sand a little bit more off from each side on this surface and we'll be ready to assemble there we go everything fits together nice and neat that is pretty cool so I just need to uh, do a little bit of sanding ahead of time here just so I can get at this stuff to polish it a little bit easier smooth some things out then I'll put it together and we'll solder this up see what it looks like on the finger it's gonna wanna come apart easy but wow what a wedding band that's a monster but you know what I'm not gonna wear it all the time because well I'm a maker and I do things with my hands a whole bunch so I would probably destroy this thing but hey nice ring to wear out big old giant band like it so the two halves of my ring are ready to go this is uh, grandma's ring and on the inside of it here I've coated it with yellow ochre that will keep solder from going through that seam on the back side and actually bonding with the gold and uh, the gold melts by the way at 1948 degrees Fahrenheit silver melts at 1763 so I'm in no danger of melting this so these are gonna go together with the gold in the middle and the first thing I have to do is get some flux on these two silver pieces that will help the solder flow a little better and keep the metal clean from being contaminated this is just some stuff from uh, Rio Grande website okay the flux is dry now this is a piece of stainless steel wire that I'm gonna twist everything together with I hope <laughs> this is gonna be a little bit of a trick here now we'll slide the ring over that one and we'll drop this one in place right there now the trick is to wrap this stainless steel wire around everything and then twist it up so that it actually holds the ring together so now the tricky part is keeping everything in place here while I give this a twist so it's got to stay centered or it's going to slip off that's the tricky part and of course when this heats up the tension on that wire is probably going to slacken just a little <clears throat> That looks pretty good right there so we're gonna leave all that just like that and I think just for uh, good measure so that I don't get any solder flow at all around the outside of this whole thing I'm gonna put some ochre all over the gold because I really don't want any of this filigree work to get filled in with any solder whatsoever that would just not be good we don't want to ruin grandma's ring I'm going to try to keep the heat right there on the seam and the flux will go a little bit brown looking 
then it'll turn white and then everything will start to look silvery and that's when I know I'm up to the right temperature. So this is going to really take away some heat so I'm going to put heat all the way around the ring initially just to get some heat into the whole thing. Oh man, that sucks. It's, it's so close to being at the right temp. If I can get one good solder joint to hold it here, I can get that darn wire out of my way. This flame is barely hot enough to do this. I may need to apply more flame to this with uh, another torch to get it up to the right temperature. Okay, this is map gas and oxygen mixed. Let's see if I get a little more ability to get heat on here with this. Try to warm it all up first. This is a difficult one to regulate. Not really crazy about it. It's hard to get a nice small flame that stays consistent. Well, that's doing the trick. I've got some flow there now. Okay. There we go. That's that. It's, it's all soldered together. Now I just need to put it in the pickle to clean it all up. And we'll do some final work on it. Not too bad and into the pickle it goes. It's been in the pickle about 30 minutes now. Let's take a look. Not bad. There's a little bit of fire scale left on there, but most of it has been cleaned off by the acid and salts in the pickle. And we'll clean the rest of this up with a uh, stainless steel wire brush, and then we'll start polishing. I'll just get after this now with a stainless steel brush. You can see a lot of it comes right off. A lot of what you're seeing is that yellow ochre stuff that I put on to keep the solder from sticking to the gold. And it's cleaning out pretty well. A little bit of water rinse here. Oh, that's looking nice. It's going to clean up really well. Well, after some polishing with uh, some Jewelers Rouge and the Dremel tool and this special polishing cloth. There it is. Pretty, huh? Grandma Rose's ring. That's Lisa's Grandma Rose. Sandwiched between two silver rings that I made. The inside could be a little bit smoother, but I think I'm just going to leave it alone. I don't want to do any more heat on there. It's been heated up quite a few times already. But uh, pretty happy with that. Fits pretty nice too. Got jeweler's rouge hands. Ta-da! Lovely! Well, that's my wedding band. Wow. That's a pretty unique video for Hack a Week, huh? Some jewelry making. Uh, well, I did a little bit before on Lisa's engagement ring, but that wasn't as in detail as this video. So. There you go, there's the basics of uh, doing some jewelry work and I'm just a novice at this so there's some of the things and techniques I did here where I, I learned a few things along the way about uh, heat and flux and all kinds of other things and picked up a few tools while I was at it too from Rio Grande uh, website. They sell all kinds of jewelry making supplies so check them out if you're interested in making jewelry. Well that about wraps it up for this week. Got to do Lisa's ring next. So uh, thanks for watching. Thanks for the donations. And until next time.